The last section in this chapter deals with phase diagrams, and a phase diagram is a graphical representation used to predict the stability of phases of a particular substance. And these are very, very important for engineers. Our, our, our library here at Ohio State has floors of books on, on phase diagrams of, of, of each substance because we need to know, or engineers need to know, how, where the stability of a particular substance is going to be. So these can become very, very important. So this is kind of a busy figure, so let's kind of go through some of the, the various points here. Okay. The first uh, thing I want to draw attention to is this red curve right in here, right? And, and the red curve is called the vapor pressure curve, which represents the equilibrium between the liquid and the gas phase. So we have an equilibrium here where we go from a liquid to a gas. So this is our, our vaporization. And, and also from a gas to a liquid, right? So this is our condensation. So we can look at this particular feature and, and, and look at this equilibrium here. Um, the point on this curve where the vapor pressure is one atmosphere is, is our normal boiling point of the substance. And this vapor pressure curve is going to terminate at a point that we label C on the graph, which is called a critical point. And once we go past this critical point, it's uh, the liquid and the gas phases are, are indistinguishable. So we call this the supercritical fluid region of our phase diagram because we're not able to tell whether or not we have a liquid or a gas at, at this particular point. Okay, And I should mention that the, uh, the axis on, on each of these curves is we have pressure over here on the y-axis and then temperature on, on our x-axis of this plot. And at really, really super high temperatures and incredibly high pressures, it's, it's really tough to distinguish uh, between the liquid and the gas phase. Okay, If we now look down here at this green curve right here, this represents the equilibrium between our solid and our gas. So if we go from a solid to a gas, this is our sublimation. And if we go from the gas to the solid, this is deposition. And this is referred to as our sublimation curve, and it separates the solid phase and the gas phase. And it's going to represent the change in our vapor pressure of the solid as it sublimes at different temperatures and, and, and pressures. So that's the green part of the curve. The blue part of our curve up here at the top is referred to as the melting curve. And it's going to separate the solid and the liquid. So it's the equilibrium between melting and freezing. And here this curve usually slopes a little bit up to the right and that's because as the pressure increases for most substances the solid form is denser than a liquid form. So we typically see this little you know curve up to the right at, for, for most substances in, in this particular um, graph. This middle point in, in the graph that we abbreviate with, with a capital T, this is where all three curves intersect, and it's called the triple point. So our point T here, we refer to as a triple point. And this is the point at which we have equilibrium between all three phases. Okay, so um, any other point on the graph, we have a potentially, uh, a, a, or any other slope, we have an equilibrium between two phases. But here, the triple point, we have an equilibrium where our substance exists in equilibrium of all three phases. Um, so this is kind of a broad overview of, of a phase diagram. 
the phase diagrams are, are, are good predicting tools to, to figure out where we have stability for particular substances. This is a generic graph, and uh, you can see there, there are phase diagrams, like I said, for thousands uh, of, of other substances. And this will help us uh, identify where the stable solid liquid gas phases are for each particular uh, substance.